All right, welcome back to another episode. This is a really deep one. So, I want to talk about how to understand humanity, how to understand people. And I've had a lot of different jobs over my life. And those different jobs range from being a teacher to a referee to IT to a lot of different shit. And I notice patterns. You can really kind of notice people, notice things in sales, all types of things. And today I'm going to teach you some real deep secrets of how to figure out anybody. Like literally, you can figure out anybody if you learn these three principles. And these three principles are, first thing you know, all communication is either a cry for help or a loving response. Number two, ask people yes or no questions. Don't let them expound. Give them yes or no. And I'll go over more about why that's very important. And number three, be truthful and unpredictable. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is all communication is either a love and response or a cry for help. And a good example I like to use are babies and dogs because they don't have the ability to communicate through words. Like they can only, only kind of show you through barking or their emotions. So if you ever look at your dog, if you ever had a dog or you ever saw it with a baby, one of the things you first know is a dog is either going to lick or it's going to bark. One or two when it's a pup. And so what you can tell is when the dog is licking you and it's wagging his tail and it's moving around, those are loving responses. When you rub the dog's head and it goes, Rrr, it's a loving response. The dog is showing, thank you. I love you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. This makes me feel good. Same thing with a baby. It giggles. Yeah. It does things. Now, when they need something, when they are crying for help, a cry, the dog will whimper. It will bark, which is trying to alert people. Hey, I need help. Something's here that I don't know what to do with. I'm going to attack it. Please come and back me up. A baby cries. And so these things are still fundamentally within all animals we all have this intrinsic thing where we either are crying for help or we're showing love like my youtube channel right now is i am showing love this is a loving response to humanity because i'm trying to help humanity i love humanity so i make videos to help you guys out so you guys can become better people because i love you if you look at a lot of youtube channels some of them are people crying for help there's mental illness you see that shit with a lot of liberal channels. It's a cry for help. They don't know what they're thinking. They're fucking sped. And so whenever I communicate with people, I know that they're either showing me a loving response. And the way that you show loving response is by giving information, giving value. That's how you show love to people. That's how you show you care for them. If it's a cry for help, it's usually somebody saying, like, I need something. Could you do this for me? I'm going through this with my girl. I have financial problems. I don't have food. So everything's either giving or asking. Fundamentally, that's where all transfer information is. I know this is kind of semi-high level. I'm hoping I'm making this as simple as possible for you to understand. But essentially, when you are communicating with people, if they are giving you information, they are giving you a love response. They want to make you be better because they love you. They have love for you. They've shown that compassion. If they're trying to get something or asking, it's a cry for help. It's like I'm like when people rob people, that's a cry for help. I'm in a situation that I don't want to be in where I have to take something from you because I need to be able to get out this thing. It's not love. Now, love would be, hey, can you please help me out with getting a job? That would be a love and response because I want to help you make money so I can better my situation. That's why I always say spread love. Love and truth is the best way. To navigate this world because as long as you keep giving love you're going to get love back it always beware of people that are always asking you to do stuff especially if they're not trying to compensate you you know what i'm saying and that's why you can feel genuine love from people because they're making your life better so if somebody's making your life better when they're around you that is a loving response they truly care about your well-being they want to see you win in life and when you adopt that mindset, 
That's how you can identify a good person, basically. That's at least that's how I can identify a good person. If they're giving me game, giving me other things to help me do stuff in life to make me a better human being. And in return, I always return the favor. So that's step number one in being able to understand humanity or understand any person you come across. And really, you see that with a lot of women. A lot of women, like when they dye their hair, when they get these nose piercings, when they're going out having sex with a bunch of random people, it's typically a cry for help. Please save me from my current situation. I don't know what to do. So I'm doing all these reckless behaviors so somebody can understand my cry for help. And you see this a lot on social media. If people are not giving value out to people and helping them out, it's typically um, a love response that people are giving out value and trying to help you. And if you just see people just kind of saying word salads or making out just bullshit. And that's why I think a lot of rap, a lot of rap is basically a cry for help. It's guys begging for people to basically come help them in their current situation. Like they say it's art. But I don't really believe it's art because art is meaningful. But that's another topic for another day. Please refer to my video of rap is not a real fucking, it's not music. Secondly, to understand people better, to understand what they're truly thinking and understand because everybody has an objective when they're talking to you. And don't you ever think they don't. Now, once again, some people's objective is to get shit from you. And some people's objective is to help you. And like I said before, if somebody's giving you information or truth, that is a loving response. If somebody's giving you bullshit answers, they're trying to take from you. It's a cry for help. And so what I like to do with people is I always ask very basic yes or no questions. And you know what's fascinating? One of the most fascinating aspects is that a lot of people, you might ask them a yes or no question, and they will not give you a yes or no answer. You see, a lot of people... I might ask them, do you like girls? That's a very simple question. Do you like girls? Yes or no? And they will just start saying, well, it depends on the girl, blah, blah, blah. And then this and all and all and not. And I'm just like, I didn't ask you all that. I just asked, do you like girls? Like, do you like sushi? Well, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know about this. Like, typically, I like to eat wings on Friday. And you're like, what the fuck? I didn't even ask you that. That's a sign of mental illness. That's a sign of somebody who doesn't understand reality. And they're so used to bullshitting and lying to people that they cannot answer basic yes or no questions. Or basic information questions. Like, I remember I was talking to one kid, one of my ex-students. And I asked him, because he was just bullshitting me, lying to me, all types of shit. I'm just like, what's your name? And he wouldn't answer the question. I had to ask this kid... What is your name four times? Now, I know his name. I taught this kid. I called his name on roll call and marked it on the sheet every day. He knows I know his name, and he did not answer me four times in a row. Four times in a row. I said, God damn, the youth is fucked. These internet kids are fucked. You can't answer a basic question of yes or no? Or something simple like, what's your name? And... That's another thing you know is like women do that a lot. Women rarely answer yes or no questions. And so if you if you talk to a man and he asks him a yes or no question, he doesn't respond back with a yes or no. You are dealing with a uh, a female male, or what we known as in the universe as a bitch ass nigga. And so you should run away as fast as possible. Don't deal with that motherfucker if he can't answer basic yes or no questions. Like, do you have twenty bucks? Well, I don't, uh, you know, I got to go get this, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't ask all that. I asked, do you have $20? Yes or no? And that's how you could tell a con artist because they'll never give you a direct answer because they don't want to give you information because they're, because here's the other thing. People are always projecting. You'll notice that people that don't live in truth are always projecting. And so when they're projecting, they are liars, so they assume everybody they talk to is a liar, so they don't like to tell the truth to people because they assume that you're lying to them, even though you're asking them a, best, a basic question, yes or no. Do you have $20, yes or no? And so from and, and the other thing about if you understand fraction, this is why I tell you math is so important to understand fractions and things of that nature. If you understand fractions, by asking yes or no questions, you are basically reducing the fractions of the possibility of them lying to you. So say like uh, we're talking about 100 percent. If I ask you yes or no, are you a boy or a girl? And you're clearly a boy 
If you tell me no, I know 100% sure this person is a liar. Now, if they say, yes, I'm a boy, I'm like, okay, next question. How old? I mean, not how old. Are you, are you older than 25? If they tell me yes or no, I can deduce each question that I ask that yes or no. I can deduce the fraction and get down to the full root of the logic or whatever my objective is when I'm talking to that person. And this is very critical. I really want young men to understand. When somebody asks you a yes or no question, you ask the, you answer the question. Yes or no. Do you believe in God? Yes or no? Now, I'm not asking you, do you believe in God? But I'm saying, these are very simple questions. I didn't ask you what God you believed in. like Because a lot of people say, well, you know, I am a spiritual person. And, I, and they start qualifying shit. And you're like, okay, you're moving the goalposts. And always watch people who are moving the goalposts. Because the people that move the goalposts are typically liars and they, they, they operate in emotion. A man is very binary. That's what logic is. Logic is a very binary thing. Logic works by one or zeros. Either this fulfills or it does not fulfill. So when people start trying to shade binary questions, that means they're operating in emotional space, which means they're taking on their mama's energy or they're taking on women's energy. Because I don't expect women to answer yes or no questions unless she's dealing with womanhood and she's been trained properly to understand womanhood. But this goes into the third point. And the third point is on your end, for you to be able to help identify people and understand the nature of people, you must be truthful. You must be living in the light of truth. Be yourself, who you are, understand thyself. And this is why it's so important for men to operate in isolation because it allows you to understand yourself. And by understanding yourself, you can then understand other people because you're living in truth. So you know if I'm telling the truth and I'm being truthful, whatever the person reflects upon me, I'll be, I'll, I'll be able to identify with a lie. And that's why liars kick with liars and truthful people kick with truthful people. And there's nothing more than people who lie. They love to kick with other liars. They don't want to be with people who are truthful because people who are truthful hold you accountable for what you say, do, and how you behave and your choices. And a lot of people don't want to operate in their choices. They want to be able to live in a fantasy land. And this is one of the downfalls of civilization. Civilization has provided you the option to not operate within nature, which in the binary option of nature is either you are surviving or you are not surviving. You're either thriving or you're surviving. That is very simple. Either the seeds that you planted gave you fruit and harvest or it did not. Either you were able to kill the deer and go off about your business and be able to celebrate the hunt or you did not succeed in the hunt. Either you had the child, you did not have the child. And this is one of the ways that like women, you notice that women really change after they have a child. Because once a woman has a child, most women in today's age, they live in, um, what's the word? They live in La La Land. And it's really not until they have a child that the, the, their, their choices are permanently etched in their reality. That's why if you ever meet single moms, they're really cool, to be honest with you, as you get older. But the problem is, is like, I already have, you already have a kid and it's not my kid and I really don't want to take care of that kid. So I, I, I hate to tell you this lady, but this is probably not going to work out between us. But that's a separate topic for another day. But as I progress, most humans are liars. And this is why the other nature of the aspect is you need to be able to tell the truth, be living in your truth and be unpredictable. See, one of the things I've learned is that when you're truthful and unpredictable, homage to Charles White, I mean, Charleston White, he mentioned this. When you're truthful and unpredictable, it's very hard for people to beat you and for people to understand you because you're living your truth. So if, if most people operate in a very um, set pattern and they can bullshit their way through the pattern because they know what to expect in the pattern. So they already have a set pattern by which they can just operate in and they know when they can lie, when they can't lie, and how to uh, finagle a system. So when you come in as your truthful system and you're unpredictable and you basically put these people on the on their back foot when they have to think. Because here's the other thing. Most people do not think. And people that do think, most of them can't think very well. And this is one thing that young men don't understand. Your thinking capabilities will get better with time as you practice thinking. But if you don't practice thinking... You'll never get better at it. This is why it's so important to live in truth because reality forces you to be a thinking person. 
if you're a hunter back in the day, if you had to be a hunter, you had to think. You couldn't let the nighttime or the scary trees or sounds like that rattle you. You had to sit down and think logically. Okay, I heard a noise, but it doesn't sound like an animal. So I understand that animal is not there. So I don't need to worry about that. I see that prey up there. Okay, we can. it's about 20 yards away. You have to operate in reality. You cannot operate in reality. If you don't operate in reality, you're not going to be very successful. But civilization has created a shield around most human beings that allows you to not have to worry about living in reality. And this is why I say by being truthful and unpredictable with your questioning and the things that you do, it forces people to show their real colors because eventually they can't lie quick enough. See, lying takes more energy and thoughts in order to be able to do it. It's more strain on the brain. And, and this is why, in order to tell a very good lie, and this is a separate topic for another day, but in order to tell a very good lie, you have to mix in some truth. So if you ever want to go cheat on your girl, you'd be like, yeah, I was out, man. I was doing this, this, and this. And you tell what you did, but you don't, you, you add so much truth to let the person's guard down. Then you mix in the lie. But that's another advanced topic for another day, how to be a very good liar. I'm an ex exceptional liar, exceptionally good at lying. Now, I don't use my powers all the time, but I'll lie about just stupid shit just to fuck around. And I learn how to keep a straight face. Like, I, my lies are almost so bad when I'm fucking around with people that they just don't even take them serious. So then I can get away with telling actual lies because they think I'm still bullshitting. Or if I tell the truth, they still think I'm bullshitting. So people are always very confused when they're interacting with me on a daily basis. Like, one guy asked me, like, man, when's the last time you got some pussy? I'm like, oh, bro, I haven't got any pussy for like five years. He's like, God damn, you ain't got a pussy for five years? I'm like, yeah, man, just I'm waiting for marriage. Now, really, at reality, I probably got pussy maybe like in a year. Maybe shorter than that. But because I made it such an exaggerated lie, he thinks I'm bullshit and he thinks I'm getting a bunch of pussy. Which, it's a relevant topic. But the point is, if you're super unpredictable and you're very truthful, it throws people off because then it forces them to operate in truth. Or you can easily catch the lie. And then you know to write that person off. So to review again, before I go off on this topic, in order to understand all human beings, three things. Understand all communication is either, either a cry for help or a loving response. And we'll refer to the babies and the dog example. Two, ask people yes or no questions. By asking yes or no questions, you can then begin to deduce are they telling you the truth or are they lying to you because it's like a fraction the more yes or no question you ask the more it reduces the possibility of somebody lying to you or be, be it more the more possibility can reduce somebody be able to lie to you and three be truthful and unpredictable if you're truthful and unpredictable people don't know what you're going to say but they know you're going to tell the truth it's terrifies people because then they have to be honest because they can't think of a lie fast enough. Because like I said, being truthful is very easy. It just oozes out of you. That's why I'm able to do these podcasts so flawlessly, just talking to myself in front of a camera with nobody around me because I'm being truthful. I'm telling you guys what I know. I'm telling you guys what I understand. I can't bullshit you for 20 minutes throwing just straight facts. You'd be like, what the fuck? Like, you, you will stop watching after a minute. But those who are smart will keep watching because they're like, okay, this guy's actually speaking logic. I understand what he's saying because he's being truthful. And you're entertained because it's unpredictable. I don't know what's coming next. And I can tell you what's coming next, the end of this podcast. Thank you. Appreciate you guys for listening and watching. Subscribe, uh, share, all that other gay shit. Appreciate y'all, young people. Figure the game out. You're going to be all right. As long as you just don't have kids, don't go to jail, don't get a mortgage, and don't get married before 35.